We want to welcome you to the Pantheon of M. My name is Ray. And I'm Heavy. And Heavy, what are we what are we reviewing today? Venom uh, is the movie that we're talking about. That's right. It came out in 2018. Uh, it's from Sony. This film, no one thought this film would do well because it's a, a Spider-Man universe film without Spider-Man. So critics were very much on the fence of like, how will this succeed? This film made close to just shy of a billion dollars, $800 million uh, worldwide. So it did phenomenally well. It, it exceeded everyone's expectations. Uh, shortly after that was a Joker. And that movie it was a movie without Batman. And that made a billion dollars. So it was, with a, with a, I think it was, the budget was like $20 million budget. So it made, you know, like 100% plus, plus, plus percent average in terms of box office receipts. You know, this show just kind of tells you that there is a market and a niche for these heroes, dark, these dark heroes. Mm-hmm. You know, the more complicated and more uh, not superhero-ish these characters can be, uh, it, there is an audience for there. There's a, there's a market for this. Uh, mm-hmm. Overall, I, I thought this movie was extraordinary. Um, I love the idea. I think what works for me when I'm watching it, and it, it also translates in the second film too, is how Eddie and Venom um, work together, you know, is the symbiosis of the two characters. I mean, that gets explored more in the second one, which we could go into that when, when that time comes. But what were you? What was the thing that, that stood up for you? What, what worked for you in this film? Well, it's um, what sticks up for me. Well, um, uh, there's a guy who just does nothing, like what at one point, but then something happens to him mm-hmm. and his life changes. As you know, as he's like, um, and he now um, has a power and he could do whatever he wants by beating up everybody, mm-hmm. or half of them will do that, and the other half has a problem um, beating or uh, uh, with with his anger, rather. You know, um, and he's having problems uh, with his anger and rage because, um, yeah, you, you know. What was the runtime? Was it too long for you? Was or was it just okay? Did, did it feel long? Because it was just under two hours. To shot. Yeah, okay, I um, I thought it was a good movie, maybe a bit long for me, mm-hmm. but yeah, I liked it. You know. It had a really good cast. Uh, you know, I mean, you have well, uh, well, he's more famous now after the his nomination. But you have Riz Ahmed from Sound of Metal, you know, Academy mm-hmm. nominated actor, uh, Michelle Williams who plays um, Annie. Uh, she's like a multiple Oscar nominated actress. I mean, she's been nominated for four Academy Awards um, mm-hmm. for both two for leading, two for supporting. You know, from Brokeback yeah. Mountain uh, to you know, like just a bunch of stuff she's done. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and you know, Tom Hardy. You know, it there's a Awesome job as Venom. Uh, you know, I mean, you, like this movie, this film in total, I, I liked it very much. Um, it surprised me. The only time the special effects felt a little goofy, there's a scene where he fights all these um, uh, SWAT guys in the dark, like in a building, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Right? So the animation looks a little, um, I think you lose a little bit in the animation. You could tell it's animated. It's not real. Right. Okay. In, certain, in certain sequences. I think that's why they kind of make it dark because it, it up close or if it's well lit because it moves so fast that you can see it looking a little, you know, the uncanny valley is, is the, it, the, the, the divide is, is getting bigger there. So um, how about you? Um, well, it's about, um, it's about a guy, a guy who gets the superpowers mm-hmm. and got to deal with, with them. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, because at first, um, uh, he's got no powers. Now he does. And now he's got to survive or like learn to, uh, to deal with his anger. Mm-hmm. With, yeah, cause uh, he's self-destructive. I mean, he destructed his own career, right? Like in the process, I, his ego mm-hmm. kind of got the best of him. Um, yeah. did you, did you follow, I mean, obviously I, I know you follow the comic books, but like, how familiar are you with the Eddie Brock in the comic books as opposed to the film? I'm pretty, I pretty well know it actually. 
Okay, cool. Because because where, where I'm going with this is that um, I mean, even though there's no Peter Parker, which makes it kind of hard because the the, the antithesis of what makes Brock who he is is Parker, right? So once you remove that, you have you make him the hero of this story, right? And not the villain, you know. And that's that's an interesting take, uh, you know. Uh, he's not known as the Dark Avenger, you know, until. Um, so the, 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 the lethal protector until the, the second film, you know, right. where he finds his his way. But in this film, uh, yeah, it's just uh, both Venom and and Brock have a common a, com a common denominator, and we we learned that in this film. Uh, you know, and as you alluded to before, I mean, Brock is destructive. He's self destructive. He kills his own career. He breaks up his relationship with his girlfriend. Um, yeah. You know. And then it, it takes uh, a symbiote who's also on its own uh, and finding a common ground and uh, finding a balance, you know, and, and that, which ultimately they, be, they become a hero. And and in that, that's kind of a cool story, you know, and that, that gets explored in the sequel. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the characters, like the character of Riot, uh, who was an actual character in the comic books, uh, uh, Blake... Um, so, uh, Drake Carlton, who played by Riz Ahmed, uh, these are actual characters from the film. We actually introduced to a lady, uh, Venom, which is also in the comic books. A short, uh, there's a short part of that. Uh, that's also true in the comics. Um, when watching this, and I know we're going to talk about uh, Let There Be Carnage. Was there anything like? Was there anything after seeing this film? Was there anything the thing that you wanted to see? like in the future, like for future films, um, you know, like was there anything that, that, that kind of like opened the door for you, uh, possibilities that you were like looking to see like, or that you were theorizing? Um, how about a woman venom? Mm -hmm. Something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Did you think that bit it was silly at a silly too? Because, um, you know, all of the jokes and stuff. You are talking about let, let, let there be carnage, right? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yep. No, no, that's okay. So we said okay. Um yeah, I understand what you're okay. Yeah, because they focus a lot of this film is just the first two thirds of the movie is basically uh, Eddie and Carnage. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie, sorry, Eddie Eddie and Venom, they're they're um how they get along and you know that whole issue with you know yeah. um with them. It was interesting. I, I know a couple of friends of mine who are in the gay community and they thought it was, uh, it speaks volumes to relationships. Uh, they felt that it should have been, uh, I was just talking to a buddy of mine who actually uh, is part of the gay community. He's one of the uh, leaders, uh, local leaders in the community. And mm -hmm. he felt that it should have been a film that it should be, it should have, it should have pursued the idea of homosexuality uh, because mm -hmm. of the way the relationship between Eddie and Venom was going. You know, nope. uh, they sure. were fans of that and mm -hmm. they wish they just came out and just said something to more of that because you have a, this, uh, this is not a spoiler, but this is a, there's a scene where there's a falling out, but then there is a um, re reunion and they, they, they show how much they, they love each other. They, they're, they're caring for each other, you know, okay. and it's that relationship in that. Uh, yeah. When I had that, when I had th that kind of conversation and, and seeing it from that, that lens, I understand exactly what they're what they're coming from, so uh, it, it makes it makes more sense that way. But I don't they, they don't they did not go that route. Um, to answer your question, um, it didn't bother me. I thought it, it, it caters to the strength of the movie. What what made the movie work so well is how they get along. It's how Venom and uh, Eddie get along. How they how they butt heads literally yet they're able to coexist and the whole thing was about uh, a state of symbiosis uh, how they 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 get along because they're a match there is something about them that makes them compatible they have a competent denominator that makes them work you know beyond just being a symbiote and human human host there is a a working there's a working um structure you know there is there is there is a there is a matrix to them that works very well you know, and that plays into the film, you know, so I, I, that's, that was how I look at it. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. That is, that's interesting. Cool. Yep. Uh, just, yeah. So the movie was, I'll just give you a little cuts up. The movie is directed by Rob, uh, 
uh, Robin Fleischer. Um, he he did both. He did, he's the director from uh, the, of both Zombieland movies. So mm -hmm. that's where you get kind of the comedy in it. Uh, the writers are there are the so it's about three writers in this movie. Uh, they've done like television. They did the Jumanji movies, both the ones The Rock. So you you got like a lot of good comedy. You get a good and a good sense of like balance of action. Um, mm -hmm. They also wrote some of the writers are from Alias and Fringe. So they they understand that the idea of like speed and, and timing. So it, it's and it works really well. Um, uh, when I first saw this, I'll be honest with you, I felt sorry for uh, Michelle Williams. I thought maybe she picked the wrong movie, you know, because. At this point now, you know it's Sony. It's not. It's not. It's not Marvel. This is a, this is a Sony product, and this is about Spider-Man. So I thought this was a, a hard gamble for her. Um, I thought maybe because you, you hear about like Michael Douglas, you hear about um, like Kenneth Bryant, all these big name actors getting involved with Marvel, and she picks the one movie that's not really Marvel, though know, it has association with Marvel, and that and that you know it may not do too well. Uh, but until she gets into the second film, you realize no, she's she's totally invested into this movie, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. she's she really gravitates to the role, and she makes it work. And as silly and as goofy as this film works as is, uh, the re that is the reason why this movie made eight hundred million in the box office because these guys, the entire cast, is invest in this movie. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and on that, I think it's really well done. Oh, cool. Uh, your final thoughts. My final thoughts on on that mm -hmm. on first and second one. Oh, okay. just the first Venom on the first Venom movie. Like any, yeah, what's your final thoughts? We'll close off on you. Okay. Well, the first one I found I found really really good. You know, mm -hmm. it it had its comedy, mm -hmm. um, and you know he doesn't know like what's going on, or he does, but he just has to has to figure out what's going on. You know, because he's, you know, he was like a, a regular guy, you know, that has to learn how to survive. Yeah, I thought it was really well done. Um, special effects were great. Um, yeah, really, really well done. I definitely go see it again for sure. Yeah. Did you see it more than once or was it just the one time you saw it in theaters? Uh, one time for both. I saw okay. it. Yeah, I just watched it maybe two little. I, well, the first one I saw when it came out, mm -hmm. and the second one I saw like yesterday, actually. Oh, nice, nice. It yeah. was good. Yeah, for me, I, I when I saw it in theaters, I walked out during the credits. I didn't think there'd be a post credit sequence in this. And obviously, there is. I mean, Cletus, you get the, the hint of Woody Harrelson as Cletus, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, that was, that's, I mean, that's when I had to see it again on video or on demand. So I was like, oh, I missed that whole sequence. It was such a great scene. So it was kind of, it was kind of nice. Okay. So with that, I am Ray. And I'm Abby. We'll see you next week. Take care.
it'll be uh, the second page. Jamie Russell, BBC Total Total Film. It's in the middle of the, of the uh, second page. You see it? On the pink. Yeah. Oh, Venom, let there be carnage. Yeah. So, yeah. So don't read Gone with the, don't read it as Gone with the Twins. Um, that was a typo thing. So when, when it gets to the word characters, that's when you stop, okay? Okay. Just so you know. And the, so, person, who, and the person who wrote that, her name is Jamie Russell. She writes for BBC Total Film. It's a magazine, a uh, periodical in, in, in England. Okay. But just, just, yeah, just so you know. <clears throat> All right. Here we, oh, so let me get my notes ready for this one too. All right. All right, who cares? Welcome everyone to the pan. Well, I keep saying that I can't do that. We want to welcome okay. you to the Pantheon of M. I am your host, Ray, and I'm Evie. And Evie, what are we looking at today? We are looking at Venom. Let there be carnage. That's right. It came out this. Well, it came out 2021. I was saying it was this year. It came out. Yeah, it came out in October. Uh, it is one of the most anticipated films of two years. This is one of the films that got delayed, right, for COVID. I, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, it got delayed. A lot, of, like a lot of films. Uh, was it worth the wait? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say no. I'm going to say, uh, what? Where? Was I happy to see this? Yes, I was. Uh, was everything I wanted to be? It was. It, it kind of hit some certain notes. Um, it's not what I thought the film was going to be, and I think it's good how this movie was to, was shown to us. It, 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 it exceeded my expectations. Um, uh, you had a cold open. Uh, it introduced us to Francis. It's a love story. You know, before we get to the opening credits, we're introduced to uh, uh, Cletus, uh, played by Woody Harrelson. Uh, and we're seeing a, not just, it's not going to be a movie about monsters fighting. It's not just a superhero film. There's actual, uh, there's a love story behind it. There's a reasoning behind this. Uh, that's why we have the cold open. It's not just a dumb superhero or uh, monster bashing film. And I think for critics who really try to put, uh, put a peg down on a movie because it's just a certain pigeonhole type, mm -hmm. they went out their way uh, to say, no, there's, there's more to this than being what it is. And it's directed by Andy Serkis, you know, the guy who, who's brought you everything from... Um, Planet of the Apes to Lord of the Rings. I mean, he was Caesar. Uh, he was Gollum. I mean, he understands the the idea of motion caption, special effects. Uh, what were your thoughts? My thoughts on that movie? It was good. I really liked it. You know, I thought it would bomb, but obviously not. You know, it was mm -hmm. a lot of thought was um, was um, uh, talked was um, um, talked about. You know, it's a guy you know who doesn't um who has an issue mm -hmm. you know of um of dealing with anger um um that he that he can't um control um yeah he's yeah he's trying to survive and and live you mm -hmm. know with a uh, with some with a personality that he can't control or if he does does um uh um control it it was kind of um hard for him to do mm -hmm. i thought one of the biggest things and it was kind of cool because i because they established there's a uh, naomi harris plays francis the love the love interest for uh, cletus and I mean, she's a mutant. Her power, well, she's known as Scream and uh, the character that does exist in comic books. But now because her power is sonic, of uh, her sonic voice, it's mm -hmm. one of the things that can kill or harm a symbiote. So there is disorder um, in, in, the, in, in the relationship between Ve uh, Carnage and her, you know. Mm -hmm. the, and they, they do explore the concept of how the symbiote and Scream cannot coexist there is a tension between them yet cletus is the glue between the two you know so uh how did you like that how did you like that story being developed of how uh there was a uh, lack of harmony between carnage 
and um, Cletus and Naomi and, and sorry, Francis. How do I? Oh, yeah, I kind of felt sorry for Eddie. Mm -hmm. You know, he's trying, you know, at first he at first he's good, but then he has this thing of how to how to figure out how to live, you know, mm -hmm. so, like, so, you know, like a good guy, but he's got a problem with making his life work. Right. So, yeah, yeah, you know, he's, it's kind of hard for him. Makes me feel kind of bad anyway. Um, I really like this movie. It was good. Lots of special effects and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would um, uh, give it, honestly, I'd give it a seven, eight, maybe, I'd give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's my views on a guy yeah. who's just survived. And, right. I give yeah. it an eight, too. Well, so what movie would you give it as a double feature, then? Like, what would you group this movie with? What, what, or what movie would work with this in conjunction of Venom 2? In conjunction with Venom 2? Yeah, double feature. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, I would say again, um, the Hulk. Again. The Eric yeah. Banner Hulk? Yeah, no, the other one. Um, what's the first? You, you know what? A, this is Hulk. That was with Edward Norton? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's trying to survive. Mm -hmm. Trying to live. You know, he's got a... He's trying to live and... Um, yeah. Something and and um, uh, control something that he can't... Um, that he can't um, deal with. So, yeah. I really liked it, though. Yeah. Uh, for me, I because of how this movie kind of goes towards, and I, I noticed this because the ending, like how it ends up in, uh, on a cathedral and it ends up climbing high, right? Yeah. It re reminded me of Batman 1989, you know, with the Joker and Batman. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like it, it was on top and, you know, and, the only, and it, it got higher and higher. And basically, he fought, he had a fight, you know, uh, tooth and nail. Uh, get your enemy, you know, and, the, and there was a scene where they're, again, he saves the girl, but both are hanging, you know, for dear life. So, as you said, trying to survive and these are the type of, like, um, themes. These are, this is the visual element you're, you're getting. I'm also thinking of, like, shades of uh, Gwen Stacy, you know, because if, yeah. if she falls and she dies, I mean, you, you, have, you have visions of that death um, coming towards you. And then, of course, you have those things with a with bell falling down, um, a love interest, you know, uh, I, I can't give away too much, but like there is something that happens with the bell falling down. There, mm -hmm. there, there is something about the, you know, the the female mm -hmm. a character who's in peril. Uh, you know, just all these elements like that was in the Kim Basinger, Michael Keaton Batman. Uh, mm -hmm. You see here, like, there's a, there's a lot of parallels uh, in that movie. So if you were to see that movie first and then see uh, let there be carnage. You're, you're going to see a lot of overlap and a lot of similarities in terms of structure, in terms of uh, pay, uh, um, um, yeah, structure, uh, pacing, just even yeah. just how it, uh, how everything is just uh, put together is very much like that movie, you know, in terms of how it's shot and where and how it, it basically you're looking up and this it just you're everything's literally you're hanging by a thread in most cases, uh, in this cathedral or tower, and that's how it ends off being. And there's a really cool visual where he's, where Venom has a stake and something on a space jam. He's about to, you know, double, double, like, strike um, carnage with a huge um, um, spike, you know. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to work or not, but, like, there, there are really cool, like, these are poster-type moments that you'd be, they'd be cool on a screensaver, you know. These are really cool visual stuff. Um, what were your thoughts in, in that regard? You know what? I never really um, considered that part, you know, like special effects, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that, you know, should you, 
like um like aren't i i didn't even thought about that you know mm -hmm. certain certain um acts or whatever that would um that 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 are things that i didn't even think about about you know mm -hmm. with i guess um yeah you know like like you said with the um with the guys um um you know do things that i didn't even think about like that you know right. with the with the um church and certain special effects that mm -hmm. i didn't even think about I, and uh, for me that is something i sh maybe i should re re look at you know Oh sure, I mean, I like the, the idea. I mean, what sells it, I think, is the, is how they get along, and the, a lot of it is the relationship between Eddie and Brock. So let's just get into the email bag. Okay. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. Um, cool. This one is from um, the Chicago uh, Times. Uh, Richard Robert from Eburn Robert back in the day, uh, he writes. The fine actors on screen are mere accessories to the computerized puppet thrashing and slashing and stabbing and biting and roaring and breaks and stiffs and stuffs uh, all over the place before only one of them is left standing. He gives us, he gives his movie a two out of four. Um, mm -hmm. I guess he was not a fan of this movie. Uh, the movie is only an hour and a half. Long. This is one of the shortest superhero films you'll ever get in 22nd, 21st century. Most films are now two plus hours so this is a really short film and you don't get eddie and uh you don't get carnage and, and venom until you get to the climax at the end so it saves the fight to the end so you have all this really cool uh buildup of story before you get to the biting and the slashing and the, and the stabbing and all that stuff you know so the, it's it's only a small portion of of that is their rock of sockham stuff and i think the majority of it is a good solid story. I mean, that's my personal opinion. Uh, I don't know about you, but what does your email uh, say? My email. What page is that, Ray? Uh, or what? Oh, page two. Remember, uh, Jamie Russell, second page, middle of the middle of the second page. Okay. Jamie Russell. Yeah. You see it. BBC uh, film, total film. Second page on the pink sheets. And, uh, sorry. Okay. Um, by the end of it all? Okay, so page... Sorry. I lost my sheet. Okay, so you're going to have one... Um, actually, let me go back. Let me, I'll tell you exactly that. I made a copy of what you have. So, pink pages. Yeah. Okay. So, it's going to be page two, second page. Okay. You'll see in the middle it says Jamie Russell, BBC Total Film. In okay, middle, okay. Gotcha. Then go down okay. two. By the end of it all, and what a rough and consequential ending it is, it's evident that the filmmaker have no idea um, these quest, these characters gone with the twins. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Um, actually, I don't know, rough consequence, inconsequential. No, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it all um, because the makers have no idea. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I think I think they were smart. They they left the fight. The fight was brief. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. I, I like the idea. It's in the trailer too. He goes, "That's a red one." I'm like, "We're out. We're not going to fight that thing." You know, because mm -hmm. even he says he says something like that in the first one too. He's got mm -hmm. skills that you know that you can't even pronounce, sort of thing. So, yeah. uh, Venom is very much aware of his place in the world when fighting other symbiotes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he kind of teaches Eddie what's going on mm -hmm. and threat. 
And there's a great deal of humor. What, what works for this is the humor that works, that like, goes with all that. So even though you're going to have to rock him, sock him fighting, you're going to have a really cool uh, banter that works. It's the, it's the Abner and Costello of the superhero world, you know, mm-hmm. where they butt heads. And if you can, if you could get on board with the comedy and how they work, is what sells this, what the vehicle is, the relationship. If you understand it's the relationship more so than the actual rock and sock them, mm-hmm. you might find it's more entertaining than, than not, you know? Okay. And they make it intelligent is because in the cold open, it's the, the motivation between uh, Cletus is, is, is his love for his, for this girl, his North star, his son, his, his hope, his uh, star of hope, or hope star, you know, you know, even though he's crazy, he's a murderer. He's a mass murderer. Um, there's a love story. There, he's, he's a tragic character. And, and if you if you can see it, if you, if you could look at it at, from that perspective, it's more than just a mindless violent or mindless. It's not like Man of Steel, where it's just like an ongoing, like just relentless mm-hmm. smashing of buildings, which makes no sense. Mm-hmm. There was a story there. There is layers to it. And I think that works for this movie. All right. Okay. Cool. Disagree? Do you disagree with that or agree with that? You know what? I agree with that now, actually. What you said just opens it all up for me and what I think. So, mm-hmm. no, thanks. It's all, you know, I like to see people's different views of stuff, um, you know, kind of makes me, opens what I think, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was really, really, yeah, really, really better. And you what's know, your question for me? Your questions. Um, would you ever, do you think that um, that um, anything that you didn't like? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, yes. The part where um, uh, when, when, when Venom goes on his own, when they split up and mm-hmm. he's gone... Looks like he's gone to like, um, not I say, I would say Carabana. Uh, what do you call it? Mardi Gras kind of thing? He's wearing all those beads and he's like, oh yeah. So he's partying, okay. drops the mic and he's like, he's mm-hmm. a toast of the town. But then he realizes like he misses uh, Eddie. Like mm-hmm. he's, he wishes Eddie was there to see him in his glory and he kind of like sumps to the ground and he's struggling. Um, that part, you know, it's childlike. It's, I mean, it serves a purpose, but I didn't need to see that. You know, okay. Whereas I did like the part with uh, Mrs. Chen when Eddie kind of invades her mm-hmm. okay. and, and Annie's there to confront them. So that was pretty mm-hmm. cool. So, there, yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. What was cool. there? Was there, was there a scene that you, that you thought was a bad, like that's a surprise? Was there a highlight scene for you that was good or bad? Or no, that was good, like that you, that you really enjoyed. Like, I mean, if it came on again, you'd be, you'd be happy to see that particular scene, whether it's a conversation or an action sequence, was there a scene that, that was like, oh, I like that? It's that very one that you didn't like, the one where where they're, where the guys at the club or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was um, uh, interesting. I didn't think that it should, that should have been there, but mm-hmm. it was, you know? That's just my idea. All right, fair enough. Well, on that note, we'll end this off. I am Ray. And I'm Epi. And you can reach us at pantheonofm.com or or you could communicate to us at our email address. That's uh, at pantheonofm at Uh, gmail.com. We're going to be reviewing DC uh, very soon. So whether it's Mm. uh, Man of Steel, whether it's the Aquaman movies, the Wonder Woman Woman movies, um, uh, you know, Batman v Superman. Sorry, Batman v Superman. Mm-hmm. If you want to lend okay. us your thoughts, uh, send us an email. Give us your critiques cool. of those films. We're going to be going headfirst, really strong into reviewing those movies, including the the Batman movies, where there's a '66 Batman, the '89 Batman, all like the Val Kilmer's, you know, all all mm-hmm. the DC movies, as well as the Christopher Reeve Superman movies uh, coming up in the months ahead. So feel free to give us your comments at pantheonofm at gmail.com and we'll be, re- we'll be reading your reviews on the audio portion of the podcast. So uh, with that, we want to say thank you. And I'm Ray. 
And I'm Abby. We'll talk to you next week. Take care. Take care. Okay. I'm going to no, take a break. What? Yeah, no, it takes the second break. Want to get something to eat? Yeah, you? I got my chocolate milk right here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, um, take a break, maybe what, five, 10 minutes? Yeah. Or 10? What do you need? Uh, I'll put it on pause because I got some always recording.